Hey guys and welcome back Team Spirits. In this video we will be making a clock app in Swift. And before we get started please be sure to subscribe if you enjoy what you see and yeah let's just get started. So we'll open up Xcode, create new Xcode project. Make sure it's an iOS app. Uh, we'll just call it clock app. And throw it inside the desktop. Just like that, wait for this to load up and there we go, we'll just select an iPhone 11 Pro Max because why not. And I'm just gonna run this so that the simulator is all prepped up, so that once we uh, are running our code it's all smooth. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a view controller and in the view controller we're gonna have certain number of labels in which we will access the current date and put that inside that and you keep updating the entire system every one second. Anyway, so let's just start by, I'm just going to put one label for the entire clock because it will just make stuff easier. Why is it so slow? I don't understand. Uh, just like that. And the text is just going to be 0, 0, 0 for now. We will fix it and change it all up later. Uh, why don't we make that ultra light? 100 is too big. Uh, 75 seems fine. Uh, probably just extend that out slightly more. Put that somewhere in the center. And we can also just center this so that the text is in the center of the label. So that's pretty much all we're gonna have. Maybe we will also put. Uh, another label which will just say uh let's just make that smaller maybe around 50 maybe 25 25 25 seems right just make that a lot bigger okay so now we got almost that's going to be our basic layout except i'm just going to change this from ultra light to normal like that so let's just run this and check our simulator. Alright, let's just leave that to do its thing for now. Oh, there we go. That is our UI. It's working. It's perfect. Now let's jump into our view controller in order to get some of the code in. Alright, so first we're going to create an IV. Uh, I mean outlet uh, and just make that a weak bar and this is just going to be our time label so we're going to create one for this so we'll say time label come on uh, which is just going to be a UI label and we'll force unwrap that for now I'll just create another one this time it's just going to be the date let's see come on date label all right great so we have this set up so first what we're going to do in the view did load is we'll connect these to the respective stuff later on let's just get the code completely done so we're going to first have a date uh, actually before that why is this coming up again and again before that let's just say timer dot schedule timer and we'll just choose this actually let's see if there's a better option yeah, we'll choose this one, time interval 1, repeats for sure. And in this thing, we'll just give nil there. Uh, actually, not nil, just an underscore, which just stands for a random variable. We don't care about that. So, we're just putting an underscore. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to first create a date, which is going to be the current date, just like that. After that, we're going to use a date. What is this? Uh, date formatter which is going to be a date formatter and now in the, with this date formatter we're going to format this date so we'll say date formatter dot string from oops oh, before that we're going to have to say date formatter dot date format and we'll just give uh, hours minutes and seconds just like that uh, and I guess we can also say A and what that does is um, it shows us whether it's AM or PM now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say let current 
time is equal to let's see current time is equal to date formatter dot string from date and then we're going to say date label dot text dot text is equal to the current time so basically what we're doing is we're creating right we're just going to put self like this we're not going to worry about memory leaks for now just so that the app's a lot simpler so just to summarize what we did here in this timer or scheduled timer we started an infinite loop basically this just keeps looping forever and ever every one second so you might be wondering why didn't we just use a while statement and give true and make it loop again and again the reason is we want to do it at a particular time interval so we want it to loop every one second so if we use the while loop it will just keep doing it many times in like just one second but we wanted to update every one second right because one second takes one second um so yeah we could technically use a while loop and just give true and then give a one second delay but this is just a lot more easier in my opinion uh so anyways next we uh create a date variable which just takes the current date and then a date formatter and we gave that date formatter a particular format and this format is just very simple so hh stands for hour and mm stands for minute and we use capital m because small m i think stands for month we we'll, we we'll figure that out now uh if it's wrong or right and small s stands for seconds and a like i said tells you if it's am or pm and then from this date format we were creating a string from this date with this format and we're storing that in this current time and then we're displaying the current time So let's run this and see what we get. So if you guys have any other cooler date formats, then please be sure to let me know in the comments below. I'll definitely check it out. Oh, of course, I completely forgot this part of it. Uh, we have to link everything up. So oh, I guess I have to do this then. This is going to be our time label, and this will be our date label. Let's run this. Maybe stop it first, and let's run it again. So um, you can see the error here uh, that it found nil while implicitly unwrapping an optional value, and that was this right here. We just force unwrapped it. Uh, and we forgot to connect it up to the label so it started showing up some errors now it should be fine oh god why is this taking so long okay there we go all right so this is actually working as you can see but i selected the wrong label so we need to say time label here not date label let's run that once more all right there we go it's working perfectly so that's the exact time am yeah it's working uh, except uh sometimes the aim is getting cut it's an extremely simple fix just go back to your view controller and uh, reduce the font size that's pretty much it it's a really really simple fix you could technically um do one thing to make it slightly more elegant and that is put the am text in a separate label slightly smaller so when you do that um it looks slightly better and you won't have this problem of truncation let's just fix this really quickly yeah now i'll run it and it should work all right there we go it's working perfectly just like we wanted it to so now let's just work on showing the our date so we have our date here so we're going to just say date formatter dot date date format you could create another date formatter with a different date format but i'm just going to use the same date formatter and just give different date formats uh, so first using this date format and getting this time now we're using a different date format to get the next uh, outcome so here we're going to get our uh, let's say day month or oh wait month is small m and year i could do it like this Well, let's just see what we get. Uh, so then we'll just say let current date. I can't call it date again because I called this date already. So I'm just saying current date. So we'll say date formatter 
dot string from date and we'll give the current date and then we'll say self dot date label dot text is equal to this current date just run this anyways i hope you guys understood this code if you didn't then please be sure to let me know in the comment section below and i'll definitely be sure to clear your questions and one more thing we can do is to refactor this code slightly is instead of having all of this text in the view to load we can just refactor this into one function which is not working for me so I'll have to cut and paste okay that worked uh, we're not gonna do this we're just gonna do this instead uh, we anyways had extract a method so I completely understand the concern there now it should be fine actually anyways let's come back here the month seems to be off hmm oh wait i got the thing i made a mistake uh, so basically here it's not a capital m you need to put two small m's and here you need to put capital m my bad uh just fix that up now it should be fine anyways we're gonna call this start time uh, instead of extracted func yeah so as you can see this this is the current date but it would be a lot cooler if we could show you know uh, 17th of whatever day I mean month and the year so we're gonna do just that so what we're gonna do is we are going to say let months right it's gonna be an array of strings we're gonna basically have all the months so January February March so I'll go. We have listed all of the months So now it's just a piece of cake So what we're gonna do We could do it like this uh, Let me just show you guys real quick I'll just comment that out for now Comment that and that By the way command slash gives you a commented line That's what I did here and here I'm gonna say let calendar is equal to calendar dot current and we're going to say let month is equal to calendar I forgot the exact word it's some component yeah there we go component we want the month from the date that is this date right here uh, and let's just print out this month to see what exactly comes out of it so we're basically just trying to get this and assign it to an index over here that way uh, we can basically just get the the text instead of the the number which in my opinion is a lot more elegant and cooler so yeah that's why i'm doing it if you guys feel like this is completely unnecessary you can 100 percent leave the video now uh, and of course subscribe please thank you very much uh, but if you'd like to stay around to see how this is done thank you very much i'm trying to keep the number of runs a minimum but i i'm just completely clueless as to what it will give all right there we go it gives us a number which is awesome so you can just say let month in words because why not call it that you can just say months at month minus one so the reason i'm giving minus one is because the index starts with zero whereas the month started one so yeah of course of course i'll give you a self stop yelling at me that should work there we go so as you can see this starts at five and if we access index five it's actually going to give us june because index starts at 0 so it will say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is June so we actually want to say minus 1 so that from June it comes back to May so that's the entire logic behind minus 1 and for the day we're again going to use the state formatter so let's just say let day is equal to calendar dot component dot day from date again guys i'm extremely clueless as to whether it's going to give us a number or text so i'm just going to print it out and see what happens um what we're going to do now is we're going to add the uh, desired suffix that is the first that is the st or the second or the third or the fourth or whatever it is the basic logic is going to be we're going to get the last letter from here i mean last number i guess from here and we're just going to um, find that and we're going to check if it's one two or three or else 
and we will figure out what we need there so let's just check day is an integer all right i don't know why i didn't do that but now we know day is an integer which makes stuff a little harder so we'll say uh, let day string is going to be the string uh, i'll just stop that for now it's going to be the string of this day that we just got from this uh, function right here so now we're going to say days or we'll just say let last char I mean char is short for character day string dot last which is pretty cool which is an optional I'm just going to force unwrap it because we know that there's definitely going to be something there here next we'll just say if last char is equal to 1 so if it's 1 it means that the date ends with 1 so then we'll say uh, day string is equal to day string plus st just like this oh my bad uh, we need to make that a string uh, and it's a let so let's just make that a var that should work please work okay works uh, next we'll say else if last character is equal to 2 so if it's 2 we're going to say day string is equal to day string plus nd because if it ends with 2 we say 20 second or 30 second or stuff like that so then we'll say we'll check if last character is equal to 3 then we'll say day string is equal to day string uh, plus rd because we say third 33rd 43rd and stuff and lastly we're just gonna say else day string is equal to day string plus th because that's what happens right after three we just say fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth and so on so that's going to be our logic here we're going to say let current date is equal to uh, let's start constructing the date we're going to first have our day string and our month in words and then a comma and then of course we're going to need the year so we'll just say uh, let year is equal to calendar calendar dot component from dot year from date uh, and we will just put that in here so we'll just say year and let's just uncomment that and there we go here's a lot more precise a date showing you know in words instead of the numbers if you want to keep it in numbers you can 100% do that but i just prefer the way this looks so i'm just going with this let's see if it works first of all hey there we go that works 17 may 2021 works perfectly there we go just delete that uncomment that so i guess that's about it for this video if you enjoyed it or if you learned something then please please be sure to subscribe it really really helps me out